Okay, so we're gonna get started. So hi everyone, uh, welcome to our pre-med info session. Um, thank you all for joining us. We are very happy. And uh, before we actually begin, um, the PAs are going to introduce themselves, then we're going to go over the requirements, and in the end, we will answer um, your questions. Um, please write your questions in the chat, but once again, keep in mind that they're going to be answered at the end. Um, so my name is Karen, and I am one of the social science PAs. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sam uh, and I'm one of the social science PAs. Hi everyone, I'm Christine. I'm also one of the social science PAs. Hi everyone, my name is Marima. I'm also one of the social science PAs. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm also a PAA for social science. Hi, I'm Anushka. I'm one of the BioSite PAs. Hello, I'm Alejandra, and I'm also one of the BioSite PAs. Hi, I'm John. I'm also one of the BioSite PAs. Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie, and I'm also one of the BioSite PAs. Are you ready for the next part? Is that everyone? Okay, I'm going to now share my screen with the presentation. Okay, so this is um, our little PowerPoint that we created. Um, so, um, oh, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, one sec. <laughs> just some minor technical difficulties, y'all. <laughs> and somebody just joined us. So just to recap, uh, we have a slide presentation for y'all. We're going to talk about the requirements. Um, both academic and non-academic and things that you should kind of look for uh, while going through your application and pre-application process for med school and then we will answer questions at the end. Yes, so um, once again this is our um, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, like John just said, we're going to be going over some of the um, requirements for med school and kind of how to prepare for that best during your undergrad years here at UCI. So if you wanted to, yeah, okay. So a lot of the information that we are going to be presenting on this website um, or on this PowerPoint is from this website, which is honestly one of the most useful resources that's available to you. Um, and once again, all of this information will be sent out to you after this meeting too. Um, so if you forget about anything that we've presented to you, don't worry about it. It's all there on that website and then also in this um, PowerPoint. Um, so just kind of a brief general overview of the things that we're going to talk about in this presentation. Um, first, we're going to talk about the classes that are needed during your undergrad, um, some deadlines that you need to be aware of, um, resources for taking the MCAT, um, some clubs at UCI that can be helpful to you uh, through your preparations for med school, and some volunteering opportunities at UCI that can get you some medical experience as well as some research opportunities that might be of interest to you. Um, so first, we're going to start looking at the classes needed for undergrad. Um, so once again, this is all in the video. Uh, there's two videos on that first website link that we showed you. All of this information is in there. This is just kind of like a summarized version of it. Um, so during your undergrad years, you'll need to take the general bio series, um, which is bio 93, 94, 97. Um, you'll need to take general chemistry, which is chem 1A, 1B, 1C, and the lab for 1C, and then the 1LD lab. Um, as well as organic chemistry, 51A, 51BLB, 51C, and 51LC, um, the physics 3 series or the physics 7 series, um, your English requirements, so that's either the writing 39 series or chem core, um, and then math 5A, 5B if you're a bio major, or 2A, 2B if you're a social science major, um, and then as well as stats 7 or 8. Um, additionally, you'll need to take some operative bio courses, 
um, a good acronym that they like to use is APM, which stands for um, anatomy, physiology, and molecular. Um, and so those courses at UCI, so um, anatomy is kind of either D136, which is a course that's taking during the summer, or D170, which is a six unit course that you could take during your year. Um, for physiology, um, you can take E109 uh, and or E112L. Some uh, programs require you take the operative courses also with an operative lab. Some require that you don't need a lab. Um, and then for molecular, you need to take M122. And then for the lab for that, it's um, M118L. Um, it's also recommended that you take advanced biochemistry, which is M114. And the lab for that is M114L. Um, and then for immunology, sometimes that's recommended as well, which is M119 or M121. And then the lab for that is M121L. Um, all of that information, I know that's a lot of numbers that I just spit at you. That's all in the videos that are on that first link that we sent you. Um, so don't get too overwhelmed by that. It's all written down um, in a nice chart on there as well. Um, and then so going into the differences between being a bio major and being a social science major, um, a lot of these requirements are filled by having um, a biological sciences major. And these are the classes you'll be taking towards your major requirement. If you're a social science major, you have a little bit more of a workload because you have to take these classes on top of your um, uh, major classes too. Uh, so an option for you, since the bio classes and time classes aren't necessarily requirements for your major, is you do have the option of taking those at a community college, um, but only like the lower div courses. So the bottom row needs to be taken at UCI generally. Um, oh, also I forgot to mention Psych 7A and Soc 1 and Anthro 2A aren't necessarily like requirements, but they're recommended for a lot of med schools because they help you on your MCAT. Um, and so there's a lot of um, material that will be covered in those classes that will be useful to you on the MCAT. Um, yeah, so bio 93 to 98 equivalents can be taken at community college. If you're a social science major, um, upper division equivalents must be taken at UCI or an established for your university. So those bottom two dots, um, the upper div bio courses and upper div bio labs must be taken either at UCI or an accredited for your university. Um, and then once again, if you're not a bio major, you'll be taking math 2A and 2B. Um, whereas if you're a bio major, you'll be taking math 5A and 5B. Um, I think that's the gist of that. Okay, so now moving on to the exciting part. Once you complete all your courses, here comes the time to apply to medical school. So the first thing I think is really important to do before you begin your application process is to do a little bit more research on the um, schools that you are interested in. Um, just because although courses are required, some schools do play emphasis on different things. So for example, school might play, uh, place emphasis on research or clinical work. So although you have completed um, the required courses, it's always nice to make sure that you also satisfy some of the things that um, medical school, especially those that you are interested in, are really interested in seeing your application. Um, but once you have done that, um, you should uh, also research the deadlines um, to submit your application, which is really, really important. And you can find these deadlines on the AAMC website, which is um, which stands for the Association of American Medical Colleges. And you can find basically all the information regarding um, medical school applications on this website. So this website is literally going to be your best friend when it comes to applying to medical school. And um, there's a link um, for you guys if you guys are interested in like looking up the schools that you guys are interested in and their application deadlines. Okay, and then moving on to the not so exciting part, <laughs> the MCAT. So the MCAT is really intimidating um, just because it is, you know, it's a very challenging exam. Um, so things that you need to do, um, you know, to succeed in the MCAT are basically complete certain courses that help you prepare. So one of those courses are completing two years of chemistry um, that includes inorganic, organic, and biochemistry one year physics, and then one, point, one and a half years of um, biology, which must include an upper division bio course. And the timeline, I guess, when you should take the MCAT is, um, you should not, proceeding June 1st, sorry, of the application year and no later than September 1st of the application year. So usually students, especially if you are planning on going to medical school right after you, know, you finish college, then you should be applying in June of like your junior year. So ideally, most students do take their MCAT during like the summer, um, going into their third year. 
So that's usually what a lot of students do. And then the time that it takes to prepare for the MCAT is usually three to five months. However, if you feel like you do not have like a really strong grasp and some of the topics like physics or you know chemistry or biology which are heavily tested on the test then maybe consider starting the study a little bit earlier um, it's always nice to give yourself um, extra time to study rather than rushing at the end and feeling overwhelmed because when you do um, you know take that exam you want to be really confident in yourself and you don't want to like doubt yourself because it's a really stressful environment um, as someone who has studied for the MCAT it gets really stressful and it's really overwhelming and sometimes you start considering like oh my gosh am I ready or am I not ready so it's always good to give yourself that extra time um, just to double like make sure that you got this and build up your confidence because a big part of the MCAT is not only studying the material but also being confident in yourself um, because that could really affect your performance the day of the exam um, so that's one of the biggest recommendations I have and yeah Okay, so how to register for the MCAT. So once again, um, you can access like the MCAT registration through the AMC website and the 2021 test, school, test dates are available now. Um, and it has opened already, I believe, for the January and March deadlines. Um, so if you are interested in taking like the MCAT during these times, then maybe you should consider like looking at them and maybe signing up. Um, it's a really easy process. Um, it will also, I think, I believe the February and like later deadlines will open later on and they, it gives you the exact date. So when it opens, so when, if you do plan on signing up for the MCAT, it's really important for you to like log in at the time given just because the spots get filled up really, really fast. Um, also, you might want to also put your information ahead of time. So when it comes to the day where like the application opens for that um, month that you plan on taking your MCAT, that's already done because the process takes a while, like putting in your name, your address, um, you know, agreeing to certain um, policies and stuff. So that takes a while. So you might want to do that beforehand. And then when a day comes, you know, you just simply register, pay for your MCAT. Um, the MCAT is roughly like 350. So it is quite expensive. However, if you feel like you need assistance, they also have an assistance program that you can access through the AMC website as well. And then practice tests and workshops. So when it comes to pra um, practicing for the MCAT, you have like the Kaplan books, which a lot of students use and they're highly popular. Um, usually they recommend that, you know, you buy the newest version or like a year before like the newest version if that makes sense um, because it's up to date with all the information that you need to know. However, I've heard before from other students that later versions work equally as well because um, they are quite expensive. So maybe if you get like a later, um, you know, a later practice book, then it won't be as expensive. Um, additionally, UWorld is a really good one. I personally use it. It's amazing because it's just question banks, like a bunch of questions that like practicing is literally the best thing you can do when it comes to the MCAT because, you know, you need to learn how to pace yourself because it's a really long exam. So you need to learn how to like build up that stamina so that you don't get tired through like all the questions because it's really easy to get really tired. Um, so that your world is amazing and it gives you feedback. Um, and you get the question wrong, it tells you why you got it wrong. So it's a really helpful guide. Um, also the AMC has also like um, question banks as well, practice tests and like flashcards. So those are really good, especially because they are the ones who make the test. So you can kind of see like the difficulty of the questions and what you can expect to see on test day. Um, so yeah, those would be like the biggest resources you guys have available to you. If you're looking for a free resource, cause I know it can get a little bit expensive. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, I think my window froze. But um, you can go on YouTube as well and they have free videos reviewing all the topics for the MCAT. So that's a free resource that you can use as well, you know, cause it could get a bit expensive and we're all college students and we know a lot of, a lot of us, you know, are broke college students. So <laughs> you guys can definitely make use of those free resources online. Okay, more of a lighter topic, I guess, but if you are interested in applying to medical school, one of the most important things that you can do is really be a very holistic applicant. So instead of just um, someone who was very focused on academics and research and other things that like are typical to pre-med, um, you might want to consider joining some clubs as well. So if you go on campus campusorgs.uci.edu and you look up bio or pre-med or any of those like key buzzwords, you'll be able to find a list of clubs that are typically associated with um, bio majors or like just pre-med, pre-health in general. Um, we've listed some here, like the Public Health Association, Pre-Dental, Camp Med, 
Um, and there's also another resource over there that you can use to find some more organizations. Um, one thing about orgs, I say as a general rule, you kind of want to pick quality over quantity. So instead of involving yourself in a whole bunch of different orgs, maybe pick a couple that actually really interest you and try to get leadership positions um, or just get a little bit more involved in the club than maybe just a general member would. Um, in order to kind of show um, medical schools that you're a very strong applicant, they do want to see some sort of leadership experience. So if you're able to get that within the clubs at UCI, then that's a great way to get that out of the way while also, you know, doing something that actually interests you outside of academics. Um, another great thing that you can do is volunteer. Obviously, clinical experience is really, really really beneficial um, in a med school application. Over here, we do have some um, student run clinics under the UCI School of Medicine that's, that we've listed there. Um, and a whole list of those can be found on the website as well. Um, these are great because they're usually on campus or very close to campus, so it won't be really hard to get to those locations. Um, and they do provide you with a lot of hands-on experience that you might not be able to get anywhere else. Um, you can also find volunteering opportunities outside of UCI. You know, there's a lot of hospitals um, and private practices in the area, so definitely look into that as well. You can always go on ucihealth.org <laughs> slash volunteer um, for more resources on that. All right. Uh, so in addition to everything else, um, research is another great experience to add to your resume uh, if you're looking at med school. Um, some common misconceptions is uh, some people believe it has to be bio research or that you have to be in a lab pipetting something and that's not the case. Um, they're really looking for kind of you applying and pursuing something related to something you're interested in or passionate about in like an academic field and pursuing your own thoughts and ideas with it. Um, so any, any research, any creative project is going to go, look good on your resume. Um, so Europe is our undergraduate research opportunity program here at UCI. They fund a lot of research and there's an annual symposium where you actually get to present your research either in a, like a 15 minute oral presentation or in a poster, um, both of which are really good to have uh, on your resume. That's something to kind of brag about that your research was at the quality that um, you were able to present it in front of a faculty and other students. Um, if you are interested in getting involved in research of any kind, the Europe office is available to help. Uh, they have drop-in hours uh, scheduled. If you go to their website, europe.uci.edu, they have a bunch of them on the front page. Um, if you are looking more uh, than an office hour, kind of like just to drop in and ask your questions, and you want someone to walk through uh, the how and why of getting involved in research at UCI, a great thing to do is to go to the Get Involved in Research workshop that they're having next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Um, it's about two hours, but it'll really go in depth for like how you go about finding research opportunities and what research opportunity might be out there for you. Um, they can help you find faculty advisors, they can help you find funding, and they can help you with the entire process of getting involved in research here at UCI. We've also added, uh, for your reference, the bio labs uh, and the bio research opportunities in case you wanted to tailor your research experience more towards uh, your, your bio or pre-med journey. Um, there are some great opportunities within the School of Medicine as well as our other bio or within our bio departments. Um, neurobiology behavior for one has a lot of great opportunities um, and they're all listed at the faculty list uh, apps.bio.uci.edu, that long one. Um, it's really great. Uh, we put all of the faculty mentors that are available for research as well as a little description of what they're looking for in a student as well as their uh, what they do for their research. Um, for all the information about how to get involved in Bio 199, uh, just go to the link uh, undergraduatebio.uci.edu. All right, well, that wraps our uh, presentation for you. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to type them in the chat uh, and we'll just answer, we'll read them and answer them aloud. I think that's the easiest way. All right, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, Diana. Hi everyone, my name is Diana and I'm an academic counselor in BioSci. I'm really happy to see such a good turnout. Um, so we do really appreciate your time. I know that the peers, you know, put a lot of effort into this. 
So thank you. Um, one other thing, let me share my screen. I think I changed the uh, setting, so I think you're able to share now. Okay. Sorry, I have so many windows. Um, okay, can everyone see the UCI BioSci homepage here? Okay, great. So um, we've changed a few things. If you go students, undergrads, you'll notice there's a student affairs page. We have our lovely peer advisors on this page as well. Um, but you want to go to services, pre-health advisement, which they mentioned earlier. But on this page, there is a link for pre-health calendar. So all these events that we used to have in person is online right um, there are things that are coming up um, health professions week well yeah health professions week is actually going on right now um, you can hear about different talks learn about different health professions see what's out there many times students feel that there's only med dental pharmacy optometry but there's so much more um, so we want you to be aware of upcoming events and we'll post them here. The other thing would be opportunities. So as you are home and you look for opportunities near your home, local hospitals, clinics, um, low cost clinics, nonprofit groups, hospice care, nursing homes and things like that. When it is safe to come back to Irvine one day, if you scroll to the very bottom of this page, you will see, da, 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 right here, clinic, clinical and community volunteer opportunities. These are places that historically our students have uh, worked at while they were at UCI. So everything's within the local community. So if you are currently in Orange County, I would say visit this page and see um as the situation changes different places are you know changing uh the way that they're allowing for volunteers um more recently if anyone has heard of cope health scholars i talked to a student who's actually going to be in person but i talked to her about three weeks ago and she said that she was going to start in december so um check back periodically and one other thing about the fee assistance program that um, Alejandra mentioned. When in doubt, just fill it out, okay? They can tell you if you don't meet the requirements or not financially, but if you do, you can get, um, you know, assistance, fee assistance with the MCAT, fee assistance with applying to medical school, which costs a lot of money. So please look at that. Um, and that's all that I have to say. Oh, one more other thing. So BioSci 3A is, an, is a class that we offer in the winter quarter only. And we go over things like pre-med requirements, when to apply, how to be competitive, what to do if you're not competitive, and all the other health professions that go along with um, allied health in general. So we recommend that you do look into BioSci 3A um this coming quarter okay i'll go ahead and stop sharing thank you okay so we have a few questions in the chat the first one is have any of you applied for medical school this year if so what has the process been like for you so far um so i haven't actually applied yet but i'm in the process of it and i think the biggest thing that i've i'm learning as i go is like you really want to take your time and prepare it ahead of time because time goes by so fast and there's so many things that you don't consider um when like you look into the future like okay i'm gonna apply i still have a year to apply but you don't really consider all the things that you need to do to get ready for like that to start your application 
Um, so I would say like really sit down and like maybe, you know, list all the things that you need to do that you need for your application and work on it little by little, like ahead of time so that you're not rushing at the end to like try to put your whole application together. So things I didn't consider, you know, I, you always focus on the bigger aspects of your application, like, okay, getting those courses um, that you need to take for your application and, you know, making sure that you have good grades and then the MCAT. But then you forget about the little things like your personal, like, statement you know or you know getting those, those letters of recommendation would do take which do in fact take time because some people take like up to two months to write like a letter of recommendation and i know that sounds like wait why two months but some people take two months some people take like three months so always expect to like do things ahead of time just in case at the end you run out of time and you don't want to run out of time because your application is like everything has to be turned in time um or else that could really affect your application and like, you know, whether you get accepted or not. Um, just from my previous experience talking to other students who have applied, um, something common that I have heard is that they miss deadlines and they believe that that truly did affect um, their outcome. So, cause a lot of them did get like, you know, their, applica their application reviewed and they got positive feedback. So they, I guess not blame, but they consider, um, I guess, yeah, you can say they blame them not like submitting their application on time being like the main factor um, that, you know, caused them to not get accepted into like their medical school of choice. So being timely is like the most important thing. Um, start working on your personal statement, I think ahead of time, if you can, just because like you literally need to put like the most important things of your life in two pages, which is so hard. Um, so you really like wanna make sure that who you are as a person is reflected on that paper. Um, Cause you know, they wanna see grades and they wanna see like good test scores, but they also wanna see who you are as a human being, you know? So definitely take your time with the whole application process. Thank you. Um, so our next question is, have any of you taken the MCAT yet? If so, how did it go? Okay, once again, I have not taken my MCAT because my MCAT did get pushed back. So I'm expected to take it in January. So let's see how that goes. Hopefully it goes well. But um, I take, I have taken um, a lot of practice exams. So I guess it kind of mimics what it's like. But I guess it's not the same because, you know, when, when you take, the, you're used to being at home and taking that exam, like in the comfort of your like room. And even then it's like nerve wracking. So I can't imagine like when you're like in a whole different setting, like your nerves must like go up, you know to expect um but based on like me like you know taking practice exams it seems consistent on like the way they test um and what you're expected to know uh but i think the biggest factor is like timing yourself and not getting tired because you know you are like expected to answer like 59 questions per section um and at the very they do everything very strategically you know um and at the end you get like it's called the car section which is a section that a lot of students struggle with and it's just because it's a bunch of passages that you have to read and answer questions on and like by the time you're like done with like bio and biochemistry and like physics you're really 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 tired and then you're expected to read these long passages and analyze them like critically so i think the biggest like thing when it comes to preparing for the mcat is like be, like timing yourself and like how to build up that like stamina and like keeping yourself awake that's like the biggest factor along with obviously like knowing the information in itself but um just practice 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 and like take as many practice exams as you can because i feel like that would just like prepare you more. And then I recently talked to a student and he said um, that if you take the practice test that you took beforehand, um, you're, you're gonna score better obviously because you're, you're gonna remember some of the answers, but it helps boost your confidence a couple of days before you take the exam. And apparently it helps. So I haven't done that yet, but I'm gonna try it and let's see how like that works out for me. I love that, just oh my gosh. Thing. And just another thing really quickly to point out, um, I have not taken the MCAT either, um, but I did have some friends who have taken it recently. Uh, and due to COVID, there have been some uh, pretty sizable changes to how the test is administered and formatted. Um, and there's a lot of issues uh, with scheduling exam just because everything is more limited at this point in time. Um, so while it is really, really important to practice and like get comfortable with the amount of time it will take that you're sitting there focusing continuously on various different topics that you go from one to the next. Um, if you are planning on taking the MCAT sometime this year, just note that a lot of the practice tests that are out right now are not modified for the current version of the MCAT. 
um, just because of all the COVID changes. Um, so just go in with that knowledge uh, and it won't surprise you when you get there. So our next question is, for anyone who is a social science major, how were you able to balance prereqs with your major classes? Are, are there any social science PAAs that are pre-med? Um, pre no. <laughs> so All I'm, right. Um, so I'm not able to. <laughs> I'm the closest thing here. I'm a public health policy bio double major. Um, so a lot of most of my public health classes are either in school of public health or in the, in the school of social sciences. Um, so I guess I can talk a little bit about my experience. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> it, it is a heavy course load. Um, you are engaging two different like parts of your brain. You are doing two different styles of work, oftentimes, um, and it can be a lot to balance out. I think the the best advice that I can give um, is that if well, first, uh, as a social science major, you can take advantage of the fact that you don't have to take the courses here. You can take them at a community college, um, which can help uh, ease some of that burden. Most community colleges are on the semester system, so it's spread out a little longer for you. Um, so like things won't overlap in that sense. Um, but if you are taking your prerequisite material here, um, balancing out so that you're only taking maybe one or two pre-med courses a quarter, and then balancing that out with uh, your social science degree requirements. Um, over, or overloading on one or the other is just a recipe for disaster uh, because at some point you're gonna load up on a lot of the bio prereq coursework and you're just gonna do worse. You're not gonna have the time, you're gonna be drained. Um, so spreading it out is the best thing that you can possibly do. I guess I would definitely say, oh, say for that too, is that like, it's really important just to also really plan out your schedule for the next couple of years, because that'll help you also balance all the different classes you have to take. Adding on to what Samantha just mentioned, so I'm not going to med school. I am not ever planning on applying to med school, but I am applying to law school currently, and that is a type of grad school. So for graduate schools in general, I would just say really plan it out. Like it was already mentioned earlier, mentioned now again, because even for receiving your letters of recommendation, you should probably have something called a graduate school portfolio. And that includes your resume, all the schools you're interested in, all like the background information of that program, um, your personal statement. You guys do have to write a personal statement, right? For, yeah, okay, your personal statement. Um, yeah, like all these things, like they have to be in that portfolio if you want like a really good one. So I guess some professors and some faculty members, like supervisors, they can make one without it, but some do ask you to ask for a letter of recommendation, like you have a resume, you have a personal statement I can look at. But in general, it'd be really, really good if you put it in that way so they will know your overall like holistic perspective as like a student and as an individual and they can write a much stronger letter of recommendation. And that took me like um, a lot of my summer and um, yeah, it's just, it takes a lot of time. So even just that small part of your application takes so much time and effort. So just try to balance it out with everything else. Thank you. Um, so our next question is kind of long, but very interesting. Um, it states, I am curious at how this is possible for a transfer student already at junior standing. Um, so my focus has been on completing the requirements to tag UCI and complete a degree in anthropology. Is it even reasonable to try and catch up now? I definitely missed the boat in life this time. I have taken some bio courses, math, psych, and the SOC sci requirements at a community college before transferring, but how much of this actually counts towards the requirements for bio sci at UCI? I can take that one. <laughs> Okay, Naya. So for transfer students, you know, you are at UC Irvine for a limited amount of time. Um, from what you're saying, the math might count depending on the bio that you've taken. Some of that may count, but certainly general chemistry, you can get started if this is your first year at UC Irvine. And then the second year you can take organic chemistry and physics. I would recommend that you look at our undergraduate website and email, you can email me, and then I will review what you've taken thus far and give you a better plan as to how 
and when to get these requirements done. Um, I also wanted to add that it's definitely possible in your lifetime, the average age of people who apply to medical school is actually 27. So even if after you graduate, you need to take a couple years to get all of your prereqs in, maybe at a community college or, you know, at a different university, that's a completely valid path as well. Um, and it won't be counted against you in your application. If anything, showing that you took some time to like mature and um, pursue your interests and get a little bit more experience in the field might actually make you a stronger applicant. Yeah, I just want to, I have a lot of interaction with uh, post -bac students um, for my research uh, in the med school, just because the med school has a post -bac program. Um, but basically, there are programs out there at several different universities. Um, UCI has one, other universities have them as well, um, where they literally just take you through the pre-med requirements after you've graduated with your bachelor's degree. Um, there are ones that are specifically designed for people who are coming back after a long time, people who want to raise their GPA after graduation with their like bio and chem courses, um, or people who just need more um, experience. So there's lots of different types of programs. And I recommend that if you don't, or if you feel like you uh, can't fit it in for your time here at UCI, or you don't want to try and squeeze it in, that's always an option to pursue after graduation. Thank you. Um, so for letters of rec, where would faculty send their letters if we haven't officially begun our application, but want to save them for later? Um, I think Diana sent a resource for that in the chat as well. Um, um, yes, it is called interfolio.com and they send to various health professional application services or just to graduate schools um, in general. So you can pay, sorry, my son, you might hear my son. <laughs> you can pay a nominal fee and um, they will store your letters and they will send them. And when you apply, you want to, you want to read the instructions on, let's say, on let's say the AAMC website about how to send these letters. There'll be very specific instructions of how to send coming from Interfolio. So just be aware of that. Um, touching upon letters real quick, you wanna give your letter writers easily one month to write this letter. Um, in June, it is very busy. They're writing letters for many students. So it's good to get to know them right now, go to their office hours, take multiple classes with this faculty member. You know, if you are enjoying um, getting to know them, that's very important. And when the time comes, then you, it would, should be easy for you to ask with um, confidence. Um, just to add on, yes, definitely take many classes with the professor that you like. I have done that and it's been working out for me. <laughs> um, so for our next question is, if you're a social science major and a biosci minor, can you take biosci 199? Yes, uh, so the only requirement for non-majors uh, to take bio 199 is that you complete um, either bio 194S if you've already done that or there are three UCLC modules. Uh, let's see, I think I just linked them there. Those are kind of the instructions um, for what you'll need to do in order uh, or before you start looking for bio research. Um, but yeah. Um, something to keep in mind with that though is some labs do have specific class requirements that you need to take. So for example, like some labs might require bio 97 or like bio 99 or something. Um, but just because those labs exist doesn't mean that that's a requirement for all of the labs. Um, so just keep that in mind while you're looking for bio labs. Next question is, is there any way that I could meet with someone who could help me plan a four year schedule? Yes. 
Um, you can go ahead and contact the PAAs. We can help you with that and set up an appointment. Um, John just linked our email in the chat or um, the BioSide chat actually has a live chat feature as well. So for more um, specific questions about your four-year plan, you can go ahead and ask them on the live chat too. Uh, sorry, one more thing. You can also count, uh, contact a counselor if you would prefer that instead. How difficult is it to complete the biochem series with major restrictions? For bio and uh, gen chem, um, the major restrictions, of course, will prevent you from enrolling during the enrollment, normal enrollment time, um, but they are lifted for um, the like open enrollment period. Um, so there is usually empty uh, spots available every year, um, and more spots kind of open up as we get closer and closer to the next quarter. Uh, so you might not be getting your ideal choice of professor or your ideal time slot, um, but it is possible to complete like kind of lower division biology, lower division, lower division general chemistry, and lower division organic chemistry, um, navigating those uh, early on restrictions. It's just all about like that flexibility and planning that we were mentioning earlier, uh, giving yourself the space that just in case you don't get it one quarter, um, how does that affect your plan moving forward? So our next question was answered by Maddie and just to like quick overview, it's um, where can I see the community college equivalents and go to assist.org. Um, so we don't have any more questions. However, we still have 15 minutes in case anyone else has more questions. Um, if you don't have questions and you want to, you know, leave us then you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, we have 15 more minutes. If you guys don't have any more questions, questions, I'd be down to like chat with y'all for a few more minutes. <laughs> um, but for those who are leaving, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Oh yeah, and quick reminder that we are going to send out the PowerPoint to the emails that you guys um, filled out in the form. And it's going to be recorded and posted to the video. Yeah. Thank you. We do have another question. Uh, as a social science major, can I still contact a bio PAA? Absolutely. You can also contact one of the biopsych counselors. Uh, they are all uh, trained in health professions advising um, and be able to help out with uh, your health professional plan. All of you who are remaining, I guess something else I could also put in is that um, we have a resource center at uh, UCI called the Social Science Academic Resource Center, also known as SARC for short, SSARC. And they're basically very resourceful because they help you in terms of like finding jobs, internships, graduate school planning, um, and a lot more stuff. When we were in person, they actually had like the exam books that you could practice in and stuff. So that was really useful. But right now, obviously, we can't. So, you know, what it is is what it is. But if you need someone to look over your resume or look over your personal statement or um, you have like an internship, I mean, an interview coming up, sorry, that you're not sure of and, you know, you want to practice it on someone, you can definitely contact them too. Um, they've definitely been very helpful to me in terms of me finding a legal internship and um, helping me uh, really clean up my personal statement and my resume. So if you just need that one little cleanup before submitting it, 
for trying using it. Um, yeah, thank you, Wayland. So she just linked the SARC website right there in the chat if you're interested too. They do currently make Zoom appointments right now, and over the summer they are working too. So if you're planning on doing all this over the summer, they are available. I like the next question. It says, um, I have a question. How do your GPAs look? <laughs> I feel like bio majors have a stereotype of having like above a 4.0. Is that true amongst the group of you? Not to put people on blast, but I am curious how realistic that is. I'm gonna be real, it's really unrealistic for a bio major to have a 4.0. Um, most people do not have 4.0s. If you do, good for you, that's really impressive. I do not have a 4.0. My GPA is not terrible, but like, it's not a 4.0, you know, <laughs> so don't have like, that's kind of an, like, I know it's a stereotype that like bio majors have like maybe 4.0 GPAs, but like, that's not true. So don't worry about having a 4.0, like no one's that perfect. <laughs> um, I'll second that and say my GPA isn't too cute either. Um, but in terms of applying to medical school, the closer you can get to 4.0, the better off you'll be. So I didn't actually look at the statistics. So um, if I frighten you, I am sorry. But on the health professions website that uh, we've linked a couple times, um, there is this. And this is from the 2018-2019 application cycle from UCI students. And these are their average scores. So the average GPA of a UCI applicant um, was a 3.52. The average science GPA, so your biology, your chemistry, your physics, your math courses, was a 3.44. Um, for the ones that got admission, it's slightly higher for each of those categories. It's around a 3.6. Uh, if you want to look at average MCATs, that's here for you too. Um, but this information is on that uh, pre-health professional advising. Uh, so like if you scroll down, there's a little statistics page. So there's one for dental, there's one for medical school. I don't know if there's any for the other ones, but yeah. So if you're at pre-dent or pre-med, you can look at those stats uh, if you really want to compare yourself. However, everybody's path to med school is different. Uh, I wouldn't rule yourself out or say you're in the clear if you have any uh, grades or like you have bad grades or really good grades. Like there's so much that they look at and they really take a really holistic uh, look into your experiences as well. Um, so don't be too worried about grades. Of course, having better grades is gonna be helpful, but it's not everything. Um, I definitely agree with John. I think it's so important. Sorry, there's like background noise, but it's so important to treat your whole application like, like as a whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't just be like, okay, this is my, my MCAT score as well, so I can do bad like in school or like not do research or not do volunteer work. I'm so sorry, my washer machine is going a little bit crazy. But it's important to make sure that you're doing well in all those aspects of your application to make sure that you are, in fact, a, like, competitive applicant. I think that's the best way, like, to consider it. Also, like, that goes back to, like, making sure you do research on the medical schools that you do plan on attending. Because I know it's easy to go, like, okay, I should have, like, higher than, like, a 3.6 or, like, a 3.7 to be considered, like, you know, competitive. But you need to look at the... Um, like what the medical schools are you're interested to look for and like their averages. Um, I know there's like websites online that are free where you can put in like your personal scores, your MCAT scores, and then they'll give you like kind of like a probability of like, you know, where you're considered, you're consider, considered a strong applicant or not a so strong applicant for the school that you're interested in. I don't remember the name exactly, but I will be looking into it right now. And if I do find it, I'll go ahead and link it below as well. Just to talk about the MSAR, I have that right now. Um, I have like the online version. Um, it's really useful. It's, uh, it's a database of all the medical schools, all of their statistics for the applications they receive, who they admit, what they're looking for, their incoming classes. Um, it's all in one location for every medical school in the United States and Canada. Um, so it's a really useful tool. Uh, I, I do believe it's like something like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's very useful to have.
Oh, thank you, Naya. I'm so glad that you really enjoyed this session. But I think I also like the biggest thing is just be confident in yourself. Like don't really compare with yourself with other people. I think when you're applying, like I've gone through this and I'm still going through it where like I consider other people that are applying and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like I'm not as like good in this aspect, but like don't like listen to that like just focus on yourself and your application like don't worry about what everyone else is doing like these are your grades this is your MCAT score now make it work you know what I'm saying like stop focusing on other people's like application like that's not going to help you in any way put all your energy in your own application because that's going to need like a lot of your energy so don't let that get to you I'm saying from my personal experience because it's easy to get that in your head and start thinking of oh my god there's people who like have a master's you know um degree or you know and so many like so much experience and I'm over here like like a child basically getting thrown into like you know having to be an adult and it's easy to feel like okay I'm not as good as other applicants but like um I know I talked to a doctor and she always tells me like just be confident in yourself like you have every right to apply just like any other applicant you know um you ha might have strengths that the another person might not have and that's like the beauty of like um you know, medical school and like the whole medical industry, like, you know, there's so many people from different paths of life. And like Anushka said, there's no like set like age that you need to apply to go to medical school. And if you feel like you need that extra year, then take that extra year. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I think, like I said, it's really important for you to be confident when you're applying because this is one of the biggest steps that you are going to be taking in like your life, basically. So you want to make sure you're doing it right. Um, so yeah, because you don't want to regret anything. So I don't know. That's kind of my opinion on that. I think for grad schools in general, like I totally agree with what was just mentioned because um, before I started on my application or even like I was just in the process of studying for the LSAT, like which is the exam for law school admissions. I was just like, how the heck am I supposed to like <laughs> compare to all these other people? Because they're like when you look at the stats and you look at everything everyone's recommending who's gone into law school and the process like oh you should do this you should do these extracurriculars you should like do this position or you should be a leader or you should be a follower like but that's technically just like everyone else's path and you just have like your own like I think what was mentioned just so important because like it's really important that you don't feel overwhelmed during this application process for anything but in grad school really right now um it's really, really easy to feel like you just can't get it done because there's just so many deadlines, there's just so many materials you have to make, there's just so many things you have to write, there's just so many exams you have to practice taking, and you're just like, I don't know what to do. Oh, that's how I felt. But then that's why you have to give yourself time. I think it's also important, like, the moment, like, the timing you're doing all this, because I had, like, a year or something to like prepare technically, but because I already know it's gonna go to law school. But I didn't feel like the urge to like do these materials until like, like when I was really close, like a lot closer. Because I think that's when you also know like you're certain what position you want, like you're certain like why you wanna go to that grad school to begin with. And I think there's a lot of stuff to do with timing and also preparing yourself for like, just thinking at least why you want to go, I guess in this case to med school. So I think that's what personal statements are there for too in general for grad schools. They just want to know like, why are you going? Like, are you certain you want to do this? Because it's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of resources. And so it's the personal statement should be a benefit to you. At first, I was like, this is taking forever because I have to write one for each school. But then I realized it's so beneficial to me because it gave me a more deeper understanding to like questioning myself. Why should I go? In the first place and like is it really for me and it made me appreciate like the attorneys much more and like yeah I want to go here it's, it's really great so try to have fun with your application process um, appreciate the little parts of it but just take the time for it I'm learning too Are there any last minute outstanding questions? Because we have three minutes. If anyone has a burning deep question in their hearts, ask.
I guess something quickly just to mention this <laughs> while we wait um, would be to like try to do volunteer work because it really helps you like consider if this is something that you really want to do and if you do see yourself doing it in the future. Um, because I mean, you can always change your mind. So it's really important to like expose yourself to that environment and see how it works, how like, you know, it feels to be around like doctors or like nurses or having to actually like interact with patients and see if that's something you really truly enjoy. Because it's not until you actually experience it that you realize if you like something or not. So that's always something to do, like, especially now that you are in your undergrad. And I mean, it's, it is valued by medical schools too. So um, it was, it's something definitely worthwhile to do.